The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, simmering for decades in the South Caucasus, is a complex geopolitical puzzle rooted in history, nationalism, and regional power struggles. This contested region, primarily inhabited by ethnic Armenians but located within the internationally recognized borders of Azerbaijan, has been the flashpoint for two full-scale wars and numerous skirmishes. The conflict's origins trace back to the early 20th century, under the shadow of the collapsing Russian Empire and the subsequent rise of the Soviet Union. During the Soviet era, Nagorno-Karabakh was an autonomous region within Azerbaijan, yet it harbored a predominantly Armenian population. As the Soviet Union weakened in the late 1980s, Nagorno-Karabakh's status became contentious, with escalating demands from the local Armenian majority for unification with Armenia. This period marked the beginning of ethnic tensions and conflicts, culminating in a full-scale war from 1988 to 1994, which ended with Armenian forces gaining control over Nagorno-Karabakh and adjacent areas, resulting in significant casualties and displacement. The fragile status quo was disrupted again in 2020, leading to another brutal war and a new ceasefire agreement mediated by Russia. The 2020 war saw Azerbaijan reclaiming significant territories, altering the region's dynamics. Despite ceasefire agreements, the situation remains tense, with unresolved issues and frequent violations exacerbating regional instability. In this video, we delve into the nuances of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, exploring its root causes, the current situation, potential solutions and challenges ahead, while also providing a glimpse into the future of this long-standing geopolitical conundrum. To fully grasp the current Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, we must dissect its multifaceted nature. This involves understanding the interplay of historical grievances, territorial claims, ethnic tensions, and the influence of regional and global powers. At the heart of the conflict are deep-rooted historical grievances dating back to the early 20th century. For Armenians, Nagorno-Karabakh represents a historical homeland, while for Azerbaijanis, it is a region within their sovereign territory unjustly occupied. The dissolution of the Soviet Union exacerbated these claims, as both Armenia and Azerbaijan emerged as independent nations with unresolved territorial disputes over Nagorno-Karabakh. The ethnic dimension has led to tragic consequences, including ethnic cleansing and mass displacements, embedding a sense of injustice and victimhood in both Armenian and Azerbaijani societies. Russia's role has been pivotal. As a peacekeeper and a dominant arms supplier to both sides, Russia maintains significant influence, often seen as balancing between supporting Armenia and engaging with Azerbaijan. Turkey's support for Azerbaijan, both diplomatically and militarily, particularly evident in the 2020 conflict, has reshaped the regional power dynamics. Turkey's involvement reflects historical, cultural, and geopolitical ties with Azerbaijan. Iran, with its significant Azeri population, watches the conflict warily, balancing its own internal ethnic dynamics while maintaining a stance of neutrality. The European Union and the United States, while not directly involved, have interests in the region's stability, particularly considering Europe's energy diversification efforts and the broader implications for regional security. Following the 2020 war, Azerbaijan regained significant territories, altering the regional status quo. However, this has not led to a lasting peace, with sporadic skirmishes and a continuous state of tension. The ceasefire agreements, while preventing full-scale warfare, have yet to address the underlying issues, leading to an unstable peace characterized by mutual distrust and hostility.
This breakdown shows that the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is not just a territorial dispute, but a complex amalgamation of historical, ethnic, and geopolitical factors deeply ingrained in the national psyches of Armenia and Azerbaijan. Understanding these layers is crucial in exploring potential solutions and foreseeing future developments. As diplomats at the peace table, our objective is to navigate through the intricate dynamics of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict to propose realistic and sustainable solutions. Let's examine three potential options. One, comprehensive territorial exchange and normalization. This approach involves a territorial swap, addressing the core issue of disputed lands. Armenia and Azerbaijan could consider exchanging control over certain territories, including the exclaves discussed in recent negotiations. A territorial exchange would require guarantees for the security and rights of ethnic minorities in these areas. This solution aims to address the grievances of both sides, acknowledging the complex historical and ethnic realities of the region. Alongside territorial adjustments, this solution would entail establishing diplomatic relations, opening borders for trade and transit, and initiating joint economic and cultural projects to foster long-term normalization. 2. Internationalization of the Peacekeeping Effort Expand the peacekeeping and monitoring mission in Nagorno-Karabakh beyond Russian forces. Introduce a multinational peacekeeping force under the auspices of the United Nations or the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. This force would be tasked with ensuring ceasefire compliance, overseeing the return of displaced persons, and facilitating dialogue between local communities. The presence of an international mission could reduce the influence of individual regional powers and provide a more neutral peacekeeping operation. 3. Structured Incremental Conflict Resolution Process Initiate a structured process involving incremental steps toward resolution. This process would be mediated by a neutral international entity and involve direct talks between Armenian and Azerbaijani leaders. Focus initially on achievable goals, such as prisoner exchanges, demining efforts, and establishing direct communication lines to prevent escalations. Gradually address more complex issues, such as the status of Nagorno-Karabakh, border delimitation, and the return of displaced persons. Incorporate confidence-building measures, such as joint economic initiatives and cultural exchanges, to build trust between the two communities. Each solution requires significant political will and mutual concessions from Armenia and Azerbaijan. The involvement of the international community, including major powers and regional actors, would be crucial to support and guarantee the implementation of these solutions. While the proposed solutions offer pathways to peace, several significant obstacles could impede their implementation. Understanding these challenges is crucial for realistic planning and effective diplomacy. Both Armenia and Azerbaijan have strong nationalist factions that may vehemently oppose any territorial concessions, viewing them as betrayals of national interests. The resettlement of populations and the protection of minority rights in exchange territories could be logistically and politically challenging. Decades of conflict have fostered deep-seated distrust between Armenians and Azerbaijanis, making mutual concessions and cooperation difficult. Major powers involved in the region, like Russia and Turkey, might resist a multinational peacekeeping force that diminishes their influence. Establishing a robust international peacekeeping mission requires significant resources and a long-term commitment, which might be challenging to secure. Coordinating and managing a multinational force with diverse mandates and rules of engagement could be complex and contentious. Incremental processes can be slow and may not yield immediate, visible results, leading to frustration and loss of public support. 
Domestic political changes in Armenia or Azerbaijan could derail ongoing negotiations and reset progress. External actors with vested interests in the conflict may attempt to influence the process to suit their strategic goals, potentially causing disruptions. These obstacles highlight the complexities inherent in resolving the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Diplomatic efforts must be carefully calibrated to navigate these challenges, requiring patience, persistence, and a deep understanding of the regional dynamics. On September 19, 2023, Azerbaijan regained control of the disputed territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenia did not respond militarily due to a lack of capabilities and a reluctance to engage in another war. This led to around 100,000 residents fleeing to Armenia, largely avoiding an immediate refugee crisis. However, this development raises concerns about Armenia's security if Azerbaijan decides to advance further into its territory. Armenians appear to blame Russia more than their own government for the situation, reflecting a rapid deterioration in Armenian-Russian relations. The poor performance of Russian peacekeepers in Nagorno-Karabakh and Moscow's reluctance to support Armenia against Azerbaijani incursions have led to doubts about Russia's commitment to Armenia's security. The conflict has now evolved into an interstate conflict over the delimitation of an international border, with Azerbaijani rhetoric fueling Armenian concerns about potential territorial claims. Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev is reluctant to agree to a Western-led negotiation format, preferring a settlement involving regional actors like Russia and Turkey. Azerbaijan and Russia could form a regional alliance excluding the EU and the United States, pressuring Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan into concessions such as establishing a land corridor through Armenia's Syunik region. This situation poses a threat to Armenia's domestic stability and makes it vulnerable to external meddling. The current military positions of Azerbaijan at Armenia's border and the significant power imbalance between the two countries have raised fears in Armenia of a potential invasion. Azerbaijan's military strength supported by Turkey and Israel, adds to these concerns. The situation presents risks for the European Union, which has invested resources and political capital in mediating the conflict. The EU's credibility would be significantly damaged if regional actors were allowed to alter borders in its immediate neighborhood, undermining its commitment to territorial integrity as seen in Ukraine. The establishment of a land corridor through Armenia's Syunik region would pose risks for Europe, potentially allowing Turkey and Azerbaijan, possibly with Russia's support, to control a key route connecting the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea. The EU is advised to prevent escalation, strengthen Armenia's defense capabilities, and support a peace settlement. This includes deterring Azerbaijani attacks extending the mandate of the EU mission to Armenia, equipping the Armenian armed forces and stepping up mediation efforts. The European Union should also focus on increasing Armenia's societal resilience, including humanitarian support for Nagorno-Karabakh refugees and contributing to institutional capacity building in the country. Given the current dynamics and the recent escalation of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, its future trajectory is at a critical juncture. Several factors will influence the direction this conflict may take in the near term. The lack of a comprehensive resolution to the core issues suggests that tensions and intermittent skirmishes could persist. The fear of further Azerbaijani advances, especially given the existing military imbalance, could keep the region on edge. The potential for escalations remains, particularly if either side perceives a strategic advantage or if there are significant changes in the regional or international political landscape. Russia's engagement and its peacekeeping role will continue to be pivotal. However, 
Russia's geopolitical interests and internal dynamics, particularly related to its actions in Ukraine, may affect its ability to influence outcomes in Nagorno-Karabakh. Turkey's growing influence in support of Azerbaijan could further embolden Baku's position. However, this could also lead to increased international scrutiny and potential diplomatic pressures. The European Union's role could become more pronounced, especially if it sees an opportunity to step in as a stabilizing force amid Russia's preoccupation elsewhere. The European Union approach will likely focus on diplomatic mediation and strengthening Armenia's defensive and societal resilience. Diplomatic efforts may gain traction, particularly if the international community intensifies its involvement. However, the success of these efforts will hinge on the willingness of both Armenia and Azerbaijan to engage in meaningful dialogue and make necessary concessions. A change in leadership in either Armenia or Azerbaijan could bring new perspectives to the negotiating table, potentially opening avenues for fresh diplomatic initiatives. The humanitarian situation, especially for the displaced populations and those living in contested areas, will continue to be a major concern. International organizations may step up their efforts to address these challenges. Security concerns, particularly regarding the rights and safety of ethnic minorities in the region, will remain a critical issue. This could necessitate continued or increased involvement from human rights organizations and international legal bodies. The near future of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is likely to be characterized by a complex interplay of persistent tensions, diplomatic efforts, and the influential roles of external actors. The possibility of finding a lasting resolution will depend on a balanced approach that addresses the deep-seated historical, ethnic, and territorial issues at the heart of this conflict.